Okay, lastly, it's always fun to look at what were the biggest selling products of the year and why did they get there? Well, it's very interesting because it shows you some trends and uh, here's just taste, price, healthfulness. You know, price just jumped back as number two from health and that's just got to do with the recession that won't last. Obviously, these are the reasons that of the top 20 best selling products in America, it was all about flavor, of course. But talk about this, here's the food technology. For the first time in history, it has come up right behind flavor. That's amazing. The last three years, it was like down here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. And this is all kinds of stuff like the steaming in the bag. You know, you can buy potatoes now where you can put them right into the microwave, right from almost, you know, they're washed in the field, put into a bag, and you can nuke them. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So all of these things that were once considered, oh my God, it's food technology, they can't wait to get it. If it saves time and effort and it brings them closer to a natural product. Here we go, convenience is right here. Added nutrients, here's flavor. Um, reduced calories, big. High fiber, whole grain is big. And this is interesting, fresh. Freshness in taste, freshness in texture. And you make so many fresh commodities, that's very important, I think, to you. What was the biggest block? These come out in March, so we're kind of a little behind the eight ball because it's February, but this select harvest made $201 million in its first year out, which is unheard of. Um, and what is it? It's all about natural. It's about taking out MSG. It's about it being a 100% natural product. Um, you got some flavor stuff in here, you got calorie stuff, you got the Green Giant Steamers, number four best selling of a new product. And here's Tiger Woods. I tell you, he should have stayed on the straight and narrow. He would have been a really, really wealthy guy because here's Tiger's mental focus. His drink is up there. So it does show you that functional products can and do sell. All right, and I just, here's a quick one on healthy foods, not to bore you, but the healthy foods market is huge. 140 billion. Look at these things. All uh, you know, low fat is a 46 billion dollar business. Everybody said, "Oh, that's so passe." It is not. Low calorie. We should all have products in this category, and they're jumping. This was up 10 percent. This was up. Um, if you take the milk, this is really sad. Low fat milk sales fell 19 percent last year. And break your heart because it was too expensive. But if you take that out, it, the sales were up 21 percent. Um, where's the uh, no specific fat like trans were up not too much. But look at these things. You add antioxidants, omegas. Look at the growth in sales, 42% in one year. Here's functional food sales. And while you think everything's um, hunky-dory with all the healthy stuff, they love their wine. So I'm really happy to see that Oklahoma is selling wine. You know, when these boomers get older, they do uh, three things. They go back to restaurants, as we heard. They drink like fishes. They party as soon as their grown kids are out of the house. And, and they get a cat. I have two cats, Winston and Churchill. They don't get a dog. A dog is too much work. You got to walk the dog. You don't have to walk the cat. But they get a cat. So cat food is going crazy too. And lastly on this, I forgot to put these in here. Very interesting two new segments. Kind of sad but true. But from a food marketer's standpoint, this is huge. Anticipated to be $115 billion worth of new food business in the next 10 years. And that's low income households in the United States. In, by 2015, 50% of American households will make $35,000 or less. And they shop differently, they cook differently, and they buy differently. And they have discovered health. So when you want to talk about some basic commodity products, for example, they're big ready-to-eat cereal users, and they, by discovering health, they want all of these healthy things here up on the top. That's among low-income shoppers. They can't afford to get sick. We have the health care issue. You know, today in Wisconsin, with all the trouble they're having there over the teachers, you know, when the, when the kids don't go to school, who's going to watch the kids at home? You know, you can't afford to have your kids get sick. So there's a whole big new health trend starting up. And at the same time, they will pay for premium. And here's the goodies that they're willing to pay for. Ice cream, chocolate candy, cookies, frozen novelties. And if we, all we have to do is look at Starbucks, and you can say coffee. So let's get out of all this. And oh, let's just look at restaurants. Did you ever think that you would live long enough that the top 20 trends in the restaurant business for 2011 were going to be either local, regional, or health. How about this? Let's take a quick look. Fast food 
McDonald's, you know, Sonic, whatever. Number one for 2001 survey of the operators by the National Restaurant Association of restaurants in the United States. Number one, healthy options for kids' meals. Gluten-free, I'll tell you gluten-free is going to fall on its face in about three or four years. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, spicy local, smoothies, organic, snacks, of course. Locally sourced, locally sourced meat. Here we go. Uh, energy drinks, espresso. There's a big thing with beverages, which we can talk about later. But low calorie, low fat, whole grains, fast food, top 20. Picked by the operators themselves, saying this is what I need to put on my menu to get more people in here. And here's the full service. Look at this, locally sourced. It's hitting you on the head. Locally grown produce, nutritionally balanced kids meals. A new one, hyper local meaning it's, it's produced right in your own little backyard or area, or you make a contract with, let's say, one of the meat farmers down the road, um, somebody raising meat, and they bring only their meat to your restaurant, and you brand their meat in the restaurant, pay a premium for it. So it's a whole new world out there in many, many senses. Okay, so that's some of the things that as you all go out to the food industry, you're going to see these changes, and if you can gra grab onto them, you are really going to make a name for yourself in product development or whatever facet marketing you're working in.